Hi, I'm Minas, and today we're going to be talking about the differences between gastroscosis and omphalocele. I've made this video very short and simple, easy to understand, so that you can succeed in your exam that's in two hours. If your exam is in two minutes, and you only want to watch this for its high yield points, and then quickly shut it down, pay attention. Omphalocele starts with O. The intestines are contained within this big ball that looks like an O. O for omphalocele. Gastroscosis starts with a G. Its herniated contents are not associated or not herniating from the umbilical cord. And so, G. For a better understanding, keep watching. Let's start with omphalocele. So here we have the abdominal wall. The inside of the body is this way. The outside of the body is this way. Over here in green, we have intestines. Surrounding the intestines is the amnion. And so there is amniotic fluid outside here. And this is the umbilical cord. And notice how the intestines are outside of the body cavity. There is a normal type of herniation in the normal development of the gastrointestinal system. This herniation is called physiologic umbilical herniation. And in this situation, the gut tube can actually herniate outside of the body, rotate, and then return back inside the body. And this is a normal part of development of the gastrointestinal system. It happened to you, it happened to me. However, in omphalocele, there is a failure of whatever has herniated out of the abdominal cavity to ingress back inside the abdominal cavity. And that is the etiology of an omphalocele. It's failure of whatever has herniated during normal physiologic herniation back into the abdominal cavity. An important thing to note with an omphalocele is that whatever has herniated and remains outside of the body cavity is contained with this amnion and thus is protected from the amniotic fluid. However, there are lots of anomalies that are associated with an omphalocele. And here are some easy numbers for you to remember. 2.5 in 10,000 is its incidence. A 25% mortality rate in omphalocele is pretty high. And it's not because of the omphalocele itself that causes this mortality. It's due to its association with other severe anomalies such as heart defects and neural tube issues. If your exam is in five hours and not in two hours, then you probably have enough time to watch my embryology of the GIT video where I go into more depth regarding the physiological herniation and I just discuss embryology of the GIT in better detail for you. Moving on now to gastroscosis, paying attention to this picture. It's essentially the exact same section as this. So we have sliced, looking at it this way. Notice the differences. And essentially what you see here are the differences between an omphalocele and gastroscosis. First, notice how whatever has herniated out of the abdominal cavity is not surrounded by amnion. It is lying within the amniotic fluid. Second, it is not herniated through the umbilicus. It has herniated through a defect in the body wall and thus the etiology isn't due to a physiological herniation like in omphalocele. The etiology of gastroscosis is due to abnormal embryonic folding. In a normal situation, we all start off with a flat pancake where the skin is on the top, the muscles are in the middle, and the gut tube is at the bottom. That is significantly oversimplifying what's going on, but just for a better understanding of what's going on here. That pancake, the flat layers, fold from lateral to medial, and also cephalo caudally, head to toe, like a going into the fetal position. Just for you guys, I drew the intestines above the umbilicus to illustrate what's going on. But its most common location is on the right lateral, about nine o'clock to the umbilicus. The incidence of gastroscosis is about one to three and a half in 10,000 babies that are born. The reason I included the range there is because its incidence is increasing. It typically happens in women that are thin and young, less than 20 years old, 
and it's not associated with any other severe anomalies, thus it has a much better outcome than an omphalocele. Again, not due to the gastroscosis or am omphalocele itself, the mortality is due to the associations with other severe anomalies. Because the herniated bowel is not surrounded by the amnion, it lies within the amniotic fluid freely. And even though it has a better outcome than omphalocele, gastroscosis can lead to a volvulus, which is a twisting of the bowel and subsequent ischemic gut because you cut off its blood supply. And also you can get injury to bowel and abdominal contents because of exposure to the amniotic fluid. Here is the passage on gastrointestinal tract embryology. Available at drminas.com. I highly recommend that you guys watch the embryology of the GIT video for a thorough understanding of gastrointestinal tract embryology.